Hey guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm really excited for because it is a fantasy oriented recommendations video. That's right, today I'm going to be chatting about my personal favorite books that are available on Kindle Unlimited. Obviously, I do read a lot of physical books. I'm a big collector of books, but I am a big fan of ebooks and I actually am a huge fan of my Kindle. I have the Kindle Oasis, which I've had for a few years now, and it's honestly been a big game changer for me. I have wrist and elbow issues which do give me some pain so sometimes reading and propping up a really heavy fantasy book is difficult. So that is where my Kindle comes in. It's lightweight, easy to travel with, waterproof, so bathtub and pool reading 10 out of 10. This is not sponsored by Kindle. I just truly love it so much. With that in mind, I thought it would be fun to recommend my favorite fantasy books that are available on Kindle Unlimited. It obviously goes without saying that all of these books I'm about to talk about today, as well as pretty much every ebook under the sun, is also available via your local library. So if you haven't already, download Libby, which allows you to connect your library card to get online book access. So without further ado, let's chat about my personal favorite books that are available on Kindle Unlimited. So today I have a mix of like self-published fantasy releases and some like really heavy hitter faves that I was surprised that you're able to get for free. First fantasy book I'm going to talk about is actually the King Fountain series by Jeff Wheeler. You're able to access the entire series of this on Kindle Unlimited, plus all of his other works, I'm pretty sure, as I think he self-publishes everything. I love the King Fountain series. It's a very classic, traditional, endearing, coming-of-age fantasy story. If you like fantasy stories that are kind of set in an isolated location, particularly within a key, full of politics and growing up. This is a great series to check out. In this book, we follow our main character, Owen, and we see him basically grow up in a very precarious situation. He, in the beginning of book one, is taken as a king's hostage because his father decided to rebel against the current seated king. Here, Owen now finds himself in a very strange and new place. He is also being cared for by a king that he's very suspicious of due to his reputation. We see Owen as he not only makes friends and kind of becomes connected to various individuals in the castle itself, but also as he has to undertake very difficult tasks to gain the king's trust. This book has like spying and politicking and magic. It's very endearing and again has a very classic feel to it. I love the writing. I've read the first three books in this series and again the characters are just so unbelievably lovable and there is quite a bit of growth book over book, especially with our main character Owen. A truly delightful series I highly recommend checking out. Honestly one that I feel like is in general very underrated and one you're able to get for free. Next book I have to recommend is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos. The first book to one of my all-time favorite YA fantasy series. So unique, so original, and unlike anything else I have read within this particular genre. This is actually a translated work with the original series being written in French. This follows our main character Ophelia, and Ophelia lives on a floating town in the sky and there's basically a bunch of these different spires which has their own specific type of magic and political system. Ophelia herself is wanting to live a very quiet existence. She has a particular set of abilities which allows her to touch items and see their entire history and past and she uses this ability to basically run a museum and this is where she wants to spend all of her time. She's also able to walk through mirrors. Unfortunately though her family has been trying to get her married off for quite some time and Ophelia has turned down all of the matches. So they are desperate and they have one final match that finally is accepted, and that is to a man who lives in a very far away spire. And so at the beginning of the story, we watch Ophelia as she leaves her family home. She travels to a new kingdom, which turns out to be very dangerous, full of politics, and full of very deadly magic. The vibe of this new spire definitely gives like Sun King, uh, Versailles politicking vibes. There's lots of balls. There's lots of backstabbing. It also has a very cold and desolate feeling to it as well as the environment of the spire is very, very cold. On top of that, the magic that exists here is full of illusions. So Ophelia never really knows what is real and what is fake. And she finds herself trying to navigate this new and very dangerous place alone and also alongside her new brooding 
fiance. I love this series. I feel like the writing, the style, the ambiance, everything about it is just so unique and interesting. And the fact that you're able to get the first book available right now, I think is amazing. And I highly recommend checking this series out. Next up, we have another first book in a very beloved fantasy series, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. This has to be, for me, my favorite work by V.E. Schwab. This is not the only series you can read of hers. I think Addie LaRue is also available to read via Kindle Unlimited, but I think A Darker Shade of Magic is a better place to start. This series is just very endearing, full of so many lovable characters, a really interesting magic system, and I think she builds a really impactful and complete fantasy plot over the course of four books. The fantasy world that exists in A Darker Shade of Magic is one that I love, and that is of parallel worlds. Specifically, there are four Londons that all reside on top of each other. First, there is Grey London, which is our world, a world without magic. Then we have Red London, a place full with magic. White London, which actually has too much magic that it's kind of ripping itself apart. And then lastly, Black London, which no one has been able to travel to in a very long time. One of our main characters we're introduced to is named Kel, and he has a very specific set of abilities, which actually allows him to travel between all of these different Londons. And he's able to do this with like his magical coat, which transforms itself in many different directions. Kel is a character and you like him right away. He also stumbles into one of our other main characters in Grey London and her name is Delilah Bard. The book is kind of set, I would say, in like the 1800s and Delilah is living on the street. She's in a desperate situation and she's looking for a ticket out of here. So she decides to follow Kel back to his world and obviously Kel is very, very surprised. This is a series, again, full of magic and friendship. It grows on itself very, very well. Second book I would say is honestly my favorite. It has a magical competition element to it. I think it's funny and endearing and honestly one of my favorite series within the fantasy space. So if you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend doing so. And there's actually like a new book set in this universe coming out very, very soon. So it's a perfect time to binge it as well. Next up, I have two more like sci-fi options. Both of them are incredible. The first is A Memory Called Empire by Arcadia Martin, which also won the Hugo Award a few years ago. I read and loved this book so much. Conceptually speaking, it's just so unique and a very strange reading experience from beginning to end, but also one you will not be able to put down. In the story, we follow our main character, Mahit, and she comes from a very small space station, and she has just been recently promoted to be an ambassador to represent this space station. And she is so excited because she's finally traveling to this multi-system, very colonial leading empire, which she's always been fascinated with her entire life. Once she arrives, she quickly realizes the situation that she's taking on is very, very complicated. First off, she realizes that her predecessor, who was supposed to like onboard her and provide her with information, is dead, and she doesn't know if it's murder or not. And so kicks off an absolute whirlwind of a reading experience as we follow Mahit as she's thrown headfirst into the politics that exists in this empire. She's on the one hand trying to protect the interests of her own home, her own station, while also trying to stay alive and figure out what in the world is going on as she's not able to get straight answers from anyone. This entire book takes place over the course of a few days and the intensity and the pacing of this is so extreme. I loved it so much. On top of it just being a thrilling story to try to unpack, the concept of this sci-fi world is fascinating. Understanding and learning about structurally how this empire works, how their language and culture sort of manifested itself, and also learning about it through the eyes of Mihit, who, just like us, is an outsider experiencing this place for the first time as well. If you want a book that is both fascinating and deadly, this is a great one to check out. It also has a sequel, which I personally need to read very, very soon, but I read this in the course of like a few days. It was a stunning read, five out of five stars. Definitely check it out. Next sci-fi leaning story I have to recommend is Gideon the Ninth, a very popular, very beloved story for a good reason. This book is full of hijinks and humor and lots of lots of action. Another one that's sort of like a murder mystery in space, if you will. In the story, we follow our main character, Gideon. She has lived on the ninth house planet her entire life, and she's also been trying to escape this desolate place her entire life. But she's always been prevented from doing so by her arch nemesis, Harrowhawk, who's kind of in charge of the planet. This series is set in a very strange sort of sci-fi setting. Basically, there are a variety of different planets, including Ninth House, each planet having its own house and also its own specialty within necromancy. Ninth House has been declining for many, many years for a variety of reasons. But at the beginning of the story, Harrowhawk, who again is in 
charge of this planet receives an invitation to basically travel to this faraway planet, which could potentially really help Ninth House kind of gain more power. Arrowhawk, obviously seeing this as a very important opportunity, strikes up a deal with our main character Gideon, and that is if she travels with Harrowhawk to this place and serves as her second in a competition, Gideon can leave. Obviously, Gideon readily accepts and they travel to this very strange place together. From there, they're basically plopped in this very weird and crumbling house with a variety of other characters arriving from all of these different planets. And so begins a competition, a murder mystery, just a very weird but fantastic time. It's dark, it's twisty. There's a great queer romance in this as well. So funny, so addicting. I loved the first one so much and it's free to read. Next book I have to recommend is another self-published option, and that is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. Obviously, I love this book. I talk about this book so much on my channel, but for good reason. This is actually a standalone fantasy novel, which is just truthfully one of the best fantasy books I have ever read. And this story is set in a place called the Kaganese Empire, a really isolationist leaning country. And within it, we are also specifically set on a place called the Kunsangi Peninsula, which is where the most powerful warriors in this country reside. Particularly, we are following two main points of view, both of them from the very powerful Matsuda family. First is Mamamaru, which is a young boy growing up within this clan. He has dreams of not only becoming the most powerful warrior within his town, but also just obeying his parents, going to school, and making friends. At the beginning of this book, though, he makes a new friend who just recently moved to the empire, and he begins to tell Mamamaru stories and historical facts that don't necessarily line up with his lessons, making him feel very, very confused. Due to this, Mamamaru actually turns to our other main character, Mazaki, who is his mother. And Mazaki has a very storied past, but she has put up her sword many, many years ago and has determined to just be a mother and a provider for the family. But when Mamamaru begins to ask questions, memories and questions she herself has felt for a large part of her life begin to bubble up to the surface. Everything though is turned upside down when the threat of war begins to arrive on the shores of the Kaganese Empire. This book has so much going for it. First and foremost, the elemental magic that's very centered in the story is so well crafted, so well written. Combat itself is brutal, but also the military explanations are just really well crafted. My favorite part of the story though is definitely the characters. It's so emotional and the character arcs you actually go on are stunning and the amount that the author is able to pack in uh, within a standalone novel is just astounding and nothing felt rushed. Like everything felt so well developed so carefully plotted out and I loved every single second of it. Also centers again our main character Mizaki who is a mother and motherhood as a concept is really explored within this story and in this fantasy setting which in my opinion is kind of a rarity within the fantasy space. Talk about this book a lot on my channel but for good reason because it's truly just one of the best books I've ever read. Definitely one that you should check out if you haven't already. And the last book I'm going to chat about which is available to read on Kindle Unlimited is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Another book that I love so much. Not familiar, this is like a dark academia occult thriller murder mystery-esque story. It also has a lot of different trigger warnings, so I would implore you to look into those before deciding if you want to pick it up. But in this story, we're introduced to our main character, Alex. And in a hospital room in LA, she's basically offered another chance at life. New life is to be a student at Yale University, but being a student here also comes with a very strange job, and that is to investigate all the different secret societies that exist on campus. Because at Yale, there's wells of power that are actually able to be tapped into, so some of these societies actually have magic while some of them don't. And it's up to Alex to basically make sure everything's done in a safe manner and also prevent these pompous, rich, privileged people from going too far if she's able to. However, though, everything is sort of turned upside down when a murder happens near campus and Alex begins to investigate it and everything gets very dark very, very quickly. If you want something that is like heavily academic, occult, creepy, very ritual based with a great main character in Alex. This book is very dark. Structurally, I also really enjoy how it's written. It's very intensely set in the present, but we also have a lot of flashbacks to build on Alex's character throughout the reading experience as well. There's fantastic side characters. It's just so 
great. The sequel just recently came out, which was also fantastic. So if you haven't checked it out already, um, this is a great opportunity to be able to access it for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. So that is my final recommendation. Alrighty guys, those are the best fantasy books personally, I think that are available to read on Kindle Unlimited. Let me know down below some books that you really enjoy as I would love to know. And I will see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye.